this season for Lennox, they've had several defensive players step up and help this unit be one of the best in the conference. This defense has several key players who have stepped up to continue their outstanding performance as a whole. One of these players that I got to talk to was junior standout linebacker Kevin Kinsel. So this week, he is our featured player of the week. In this defense, it's, it's, it's very hard to learn. There's a lot of checks. There's a lot of answers for everything they do. There's a lot of components to it. Uh, like Coach Ward always says, find your piece in the puzzle. If you just do your 111, which is your job on the field. If you do that, the rest will take care of itself. So uh, the, more, the longer you're in the system, the more you learn, the better you're going to be. Working hard over the offseason and playing Coach Ward's defense isn't the only reason for all of Kevin Kensel's success. Each week, the linebacker is studying game tape of the opponents and preparing by watching the film. He went ahead and took us through his tendencies when watching game tapes. A lot of their, uh, their consistent plays, uh, what their fullback's doing, how their guard is setting up, formations that they like to run play action out of, uh, what the quarterback's checking, where he's looking to put the ball, who his favorite receiver is. So when you key into a lot of that and you learn the checks, you kind of know what's coming. Uh, Coach Ward and Coach Bradley, Coach Yelk, all the defensive staff really hones in on that, and they really get us prepared during the week to kind of anticipate what they're going to run. With this play this season, Kevin Kinsler received a lot of recognition around the league for his hard work and his performance. This year alone, out of 10 games, he has received the College Football Performance Award four times. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I mean, the best thing about it is that you can, you can really say thank you to your teammates because that's who's really put me in a position to do it. And also thank the coaches a lot, too, for calling the right plays, coaching me up and putting me in the right spot. With the bye week this weekend and only two games left, the Leathernecks have a chance to finish the year off strongly with a much-needed weekend off. Uh, get back to the fundamentals. That's, uh, that's what we're going to focus on this week. Uh, we're going to get some young guys in there, uh, see if we can relieve the defense a little bit later in games. And really, like I said, just work on fundamentals, learning the defense again, get back to basics, and uh, learn how to play a full game. Because uh, beginning of the season, we couldn't finish a game properly, and, and lately we haven't been able to start a game properly. So that's big for us this week. Last season, and early on this season, the offense had struggles moving the ball. Kevin Kinsel tells us his point of view as a defensive player who can watch during the games on the sideline and also on the other side of the field during scrimmages of how the offense has grown this season. Big time. I mean, they're, they're really meshing together now. They're really playing well together as a unit, and that's huge for us because when they're picking up first downs, it's the less time we're on the field. Uh, that's more time for us to fix whatever we're doing wrong in the field and see what we're doing wrong. So by them putting points on the board and keeping the ball in our possession is big. Um, as you can see, Trent has really, really grown this offseason, and JC has become a big part of our offense too. Coach, this season for the Leathernecks, Kevin Kenzo has really stepped up. You know, originally he was kind of he stepped up to help with JJ not being able to play. But this season, he's been his own player where a team has to account for him constantly because he's always making big plays. Just talk a little bit about him. Uh, in my opinion, Kevin's one of the best linebackers in the league. Um, he's a guy that uh, can play in both levels. He can play physically on the line of scrimmage. Uh, he, can, he can play on the perimeter. He can be a very effective uh, player in the pass game. And... Um, he's an athlete. He's, he, he's a, a guy that understands the game. He's, he's very football smart. Coming out of high school, Nico Watson came from Rock Island to Western Illinois. However, he was not alone as fellow back Larry Harris also came from Rock Island and continued the one-two punch between the running back and the fullback. This week, the Pigskin Preview featured players of the week are Nico Watson and Larry Harris. Yeah, he ended up, he committed first to come to Western, and I just followed right behind him. We both felt like it was the place to be, and being an hour away, we knew what Western was kind of like about with, with football, with the tradition, so we both knew it was the right choice for both of them. Oh, it was my decision first. Um, Nico, it was better off, to, Western was still one of his choices, so he thought it was better off if he just came here and played with me also, so we could keep that connection together. Coming to college as a freshman is hard for many students. However, for Nico Watson and Larry Harris, they were able to lighten the load by having each other and knowing that they could depend on the other after coming from Rock Island High School together. Oh yeah, it was big to have somebody I already knew. Just we came as roommates in the dorms, Thompson, and it was just, just we all we just we basically was together like every day. Like we we all have me and Larry both have the same friends. Like it was just cool just to have somebody I know, somebody I could I could trust right off the bat somebody I could just lean on whenever I need somebody. So it was really cool for me and Larry just to start off off campus. We're, we're real good friends off the field too. You know, besides me red shirt, nothing much has changed between us on and off the field. On the field, we've gotten a lot stronger and off the field also. We've gotten a lot stronger becoming friends and everything. 
Um, you know, we know our roles on the team. We also like to play with each other a lot, so it hasn't been anything bitter or anything too sweet, but we keep it like even habit with, people, with uh, each other and we just like being here together. The bond shared by the duo does not only remain as friends, but extends to the field. With Larry Harris as a fullback and Nico Watson a running back, they both have to trust the other will do their job. So they both succeed in moving the ball. So much like how Larry led the two to Western Illinois, Nico follows through and has Larry's back at all times so they can both have success. I got here at Western knowing that he's going to make that block. It's like, and I know I have 100% trust that he's going to make that block for me all the time. So just going all the way back to Rocky days when he's just opening the holes for me to make the big big runs. It's just, I just smile every time I think about it. Um, I know with Nico, sometimes you go against the guys who's just too much to block, but sometimes you can get away with that if you got him back there just because of his power. And whenever he's back there, I just got faith that he can always pick up five or four, four or five yards whenever we need him to. Well, I feel like being at home, it's like high school all over again with Larry. Um, I'm, I'm very blessed to have him here uh, as my teammate. He does a great job on the field. And me and Larry have been going way back for football since Little Rock's fifth grade. And I'm glad to be playing with him till, till all the way up to college. I'm blessed. Life for football players hasn't always been an easy one. The path of playing D1 college football is a long journey and one must endure lots of sacrifice and pain to make it. Once you become a D1 player though, the journey doesn't stop there. The hardship has just begun. Nico Watson can attest to this personally. Just a few weeks ago, Watson had a serious blood infection that landed him in the hospital. I was in the hospital for like a week and I didn't know what was wrong with me. I, all I know, I could have moved for like, I could have moved for four days. And uh, I really didn't know what was really wrong with me till after, till I got all better. They said I, like I had 20% of the chance of living. It was crazy how they, like just how quick things could change. You never know what could happen. So I'm blessed to be here today. I'm blessed to be back on this field with my teammates. First of all, I didn't even know about his incident until about Monday after practice. So when I found out that he couldn't play, I was quite shocked. And also I was kind of scared for him because I've never seen him down like that before. He's such a strong guy. Also a very happy guy. Despite almost dying from this infection, it would not stop him from playing football. In a matter of two weeks, Nico Watson was back on the field playing against Missouri State. So the running back from Rock Island High School, now playing for Western Illinois, whose mascot is named Rocky and himself, runs like a rock with his physical style of play, is back to help his team win. Another key factor is fullbacks. Western Illinois has a slew of fullbacks who lead the way for the Leathernecks running backs. A couple of these fullbacks are senior Nate Bowman and redshirt freshman Chris Lisenby. Uh, high school, I remember freshman year, it was pretty amazing seeing him on the field. He was, he was quite the athlete. Uh, he was awesome at linebacker. He led the school in tackles. I'm pretty sure he just got in the high school Hall of Fame for having the most tackles. His leadership and intensity, since he's captain on the team, uh, everybody looks up to him. I look up to him especially since I've known him a lot longer. But I definitely look to try to keep his intensity and get the guys fired up just like he does. It's been pretty cool having Chris Lizen be here. He, uh, I graduated a couple of years before him. I got a chance to play with his uh, older brother. Uh, he's, it's been real cool playing with him for the last, uh, last two years, showing him the ropes. It's actually been a big help having him play the same position, kind of bring me in under his wing. He's showed me a lot of things of what to do, being a fullback and tight end. Uh, a lot of things, me coming out of high school, I like to hit a lot and I need to use my hands as much, so he's helped me transition. On the field, I've just been pretty much trying to teach him to be more physical because he's already a pretty big kid. He has the weight down. I've just been trying to coach him up, being more physical and off the field, just making the right decisions. And he's been doing a pretty good job with that. He was actually a pretty big impact on me coming here, other than the coaching staff. Uh, I like the school in general, but having somebody I know and somebody really take me under his wing and Definitely somebody I can relate to, too. He's, he's pretty much like an older brother to me down here. I know his brother went to North Dakota State for a while, and he wanted to go there, but he felt like it, it was better for him to come to Western because he was, uh, I don't know, he wanted to be around me more than his brother playing football, uh, so that was pretty cool. It's kind of ironic, you know, I mean, those two years I was out of my community college, they're my rivals, and we always had a game plan against them. So I knew their strengths and their weaknesses, and now we're on the team together, and, you know, so far we're having a great season. So, you know, it's great to bring that Arizona flavor out here to the Midwest. Uh, it's kind of it's weird because it's, it's sort of like it was destined by uh, 
men upstairs just because of, you know, we, we went to high school together, then we separated at uh, community colleges, and then uh, we actually didn't even know we were going to go here together until about a week apart from recruiting status. And then uh, I called him up and told him, hey, I'm going to Western. And he's like, hey, you know, they've been recruiting me also. Honestly, it's just God. I mean, it just got that phone call that my uh, one of my best my best buds, my best homies, my road dog, I see is coming and uh, the school's looking at him. We took our visit here together. And, you know, I told him pretty much when we got here, he was like, I told him, uh, I'm going to commit here. You know, this is my plan. And he said, uh, you know, whatever you do, I'm with you. So. That's how we ended up here. It was weird how it happened. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, we were boys back in the day, and then, you know, because he was more, he was more highly recruited out of a uh, community college, you know, more uh, Division One programs. And me, I was, you know, pretty much bottom of the map, you know. So it was just a, a blessing, you know, from uh, defensive coordinator uh, Coach Ward. He had, to, um, he gave me that chance, and uh, they already had recruited Dallas, so. You know, I jumped on board and we pretty much ended up here together. Actually, I had no relationship with him. I didn't know him personally. And now, I mean, we came from the same conference, so we're real close. We have a lot of things in common, come from Arizona and come from the JUCO route. So it's, it's just got us a lot closer since we've been here. It's great. It's great to see that I got family here and that I have some uh, people that I could trust and I could go back to and I could talk to when I need to talk to. And it's just nice to have. I guess you could say when you say you started from the bottom when you grinded and you were working and I didn't have no looks to now I have I'm here at a D1 college with, with my boy High C and other junior college transfers that uh, I played with and I played against and I, you can just tell you can just tell at practice that we know where we came from and we know where we're trying to go so we push each other every day. Even though Nichols and Scott only knew of Baker as a rival before coming to Western Illinois, in just a short amount of time, the three have already grown to become close friends. Although, there is still a little bit of their Arizona Juco rivalry that remains inside. Like Arizona Western, they're number one. They're the top dogs. As, at GCC, we weren't uh, the top dogs, but we, we were something to rec reckon with, a uh, team to reckon with. And it's just a battle every day. I knew that they had good opponents and good uh, they're a good opponent and they had good players over there. Uh, it's pretty intense, especially with Glendale. So me and Dallas, we kind of have a heated battle because they were the only team that really beat us consistent, consistently uh, at my junior college. So me and Dallas definitely have gotten into it over the years and High C never got to beat me. So, you know, I still have it over. Uh, that is correct. Uh, each year we did give them a battle though. You know, they, uh, they, they had pretty good athletes as usual, but uh, my community colleges, did uh, destroy them this year, you know. I, I looked that up online uh, a couple days ago. So, you know, that's one thing I get on him about, you know, as the, as the season's on, we're, uh, we're making it happen down there. So, you know, but we're here now, we're family now. We're together now, we're playing now. So that's pretty much all that matters. You know, I want to show off for my junior college. I know they want to do the same for theirs, but at the end of the day, we're playing for one team right now and one goal. And so, you know, we're just bringing all our talents together and just trying to accomplish the best we can for the season. We sold, we sold, we sold. We're about it, we're about it.